Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com and this is part two of a conversation I had with Andrew Locke where we're discussing .NET 5 and migrating from full framework to .NET Core and what that looked like for both of us, some of the challenges we had. Um, part one, I'll put a link in the description that we were talking about source generators. So this is part two, Andrew Locke and I discussing .NET 5 and migrating to .NET Core. Yeah, I think that's interesting. That's too. The, I mean, the .NET five stuff, the unification stuff. I, um, I really don't know how I feel about it. I I feel like I get it. Like kind of converging the BCL. I mean, you're still gonna have. Um. I just I yeah I don't know if. <laughs> I've said this a million times on Twitter. I don't know if it's gonna add or not add more or less confusion. Yeah. I'm completely behind you. I have no idea which way it's going to go because I feel like we're only just getting to the point where people understand what .NET Core is. And now you're going to be having .NET 5. I mean, I, they've obviously based it on, you know, market research, essentially. It yeah. seemed to be, you know, apparently it gave the, less com the least confusion. But uh, there's going to be a yeah. lot of confusion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I guess it's um, and and I I just I think about user groups. I think when I go to conferences, I usually that's something I always ask people is like, are you migrating? Are you not migrating? If yes, why? If no, why? And so so many of the things that I've talked to with folks has been just confused uh and i'll give you the example is in the early days well i guess really up until dotnet core 3 um you could run asp.net core on full framework yeah right you can run um ef core on full framework yeah. so there was this well we can't use that because it only runs on dotnet core and then you're like well no it doesn't and they're like well what the hell's the name about <laughs> like yeah. right but then that, so that kind of statement um, were only true up until a certain point. And now yeah. really, if somebody tells me that, it's like, yeah, you are right now. Like you're yeah, correct yeah. now in saying that that only works there. Yeah, the old stop clocks, right? Uh, it's yeah. There. yeah. So I don't yeah. know. I mean, I think it's good. I don't know what the alternative would be, but. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I agree. It, it's sort of. I think the unification in general is a good idea. Like it doesn't make sense to be maintaining multiple, essentially identical code bases. I think that yeah. the, the only thing, the only question I have is around the naming and yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that side is difficult, but the other thing I think about is how many people are going to be stuck on ASP.NET just, just stuck because you know, yeah. you, you have your subsect of people you'll talk to, but those are only the people who are going to conferences as well. I, I'm sure there's, you know, millions of .NET shops oh, which yeah. aren't, and I don't know that there is really a easy answer for them to other than. Well, oh, yeah, I don't know. Like it's, <laughs> yeah, I would say like because I've been writing about it and talking to people more about migrations, and it was e I would easy is not the right word. It was plausible that we could migrate because of where it started and we kind of started our project right at the time that everything was kind of happening before even .NET Core was called .NET Core, right? With K mm -hmm. everything. And yeah. Um, so, and then being kind of aware kind of just led us down a path of realizing, okay, this is, this is, we need to follow along and there was luck involved of like certain a lot of its dependencies too and whether library authors and framework authors like took the initiative to move along with net standard and stuff so but yeah i can only yeah. imagine the number of projects that there's just they're probably so like, it's too much of an undertaking to even consider yeah. yeah right yeah and i think the ef core thing so was it EF Core 3 that they they decided to hang back with? Yeah, they, they decided the... first, they were like, no, we're it's only going to work yeah. on Dynamic Core 3. Then they 
went back and said, okay, no, it will work on at standard two. Yep. And I still, now, I still, now it's back to, now it's 2-1. I think it's 2-1 now, yeah. Yeah. So, which... I can't keep track. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that was a big sticking point because uh, I was talking to a, one of my friends was converting a massive win. They've got, so they've got a massive win forms um, application and they're desperately trying to modernize on the side. And they were so they were sharing a bunch of code with EF Core in that respect, and they they saw they had a migration path. Basically, they could do everything back to the EF Core, do their standard packages all the way, and then. But there's some fundamental bugs in EF Core two, I think, which they basically were, yeah. were blockers, and then they're, they're sort of stuffed a bit at the moment. I think they don't really know what to do because they can't just upgrade package, so they just taken to copy and pasting code which okay is yeah what else what, what other choice is, you have? Yeah. yeah yeah um yeah i mean i like i like where dotnet core is going i think that's the oh, thing for it's, sure yeah that is there's definite progress sometimes it feels a bit too fast but i feel like it, with dotnet 5 settling down in that to that yearly cadence is yeah so every other year essentially is going to be an lts right so yeah i think that's exactly what to sort of needs yeah so yeah yeah we'll see. the other thing with the migration thing i think is and i posted this last week um was if you're starting to think about migrating i kind of feel like your ship has sailed a little bit in the sense that the the kind of the path to migration was at kind of 2.0 where aspnet could still work on full framework and the reason yeah. being is because if that was, say you you have a large web app, that's going to be one thing that's going to be a giant dependency that you need to move, right? So if you can, yeah. and you can, I wouldn't say it's simple, it's work, but you can move from, you know what I mean, web API on framework or MVC and move to ASP.NET Core. Um, I wouldn't say with ease, but you can do it. It's doable. Yeah. Um, and you can still run it on full framework, right? And then you can run the analyzer, the portability analyzer, to see what stuff you're using that you can't yep. be using in the future. You can see what dependencies that you need, like are there equivalent packages that you just need to, like they're, they haven't target net standard or et cetera. Yeah. You might need to rip some out and replace certain things. Uh, but at least you can do that incrementally and still be running on yeah. .NET Framework, right? Where if you can get your entire app essentially .NET Standard 2 compliant, for the most part, there's some caveats to that, but that for the yeah. most part, then that means that yes, you could also target .NET Core. Yep. But now there's kind of like, that ship sailed. Like you can't, you would yeah. still have to do exactly what I'm saying, doing it towards two yeah, or two one and kind of move along. Yeah, and if this is exactly what we had. Um, I. I guess it was well yeah it was around the 2.1 time frame that ported a massive framework app exactly the same and it would it it actually went really smoothly considering yeah um we didn't have we didn't have any razor dependencies we didn't have many actual like windows or framework dependencies so that was actually went pretty well but like you say trying to go straight to three or five when it comes is yeah I, I wonder if it actually shouldn't even be suggested. I wonder if it should always that should always be the deployment step. It's go two, but then two to three is non-trivial. It's not massive, but you know. Yeah. 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 At least two one still on LTS right now, so it's yes. Yeah, it's kind of like now's the time if you're going to yeah. do it. Like <laughs> yeah, if you're really going to wait, and but that's a problem is people might not necessarily know what the migration path looks like. Yeah. Um that it's yeah especially again if you're coming from ASP.NET core I, I i'm not a winform wpf person generally so i can't speak to those yeah types of apps but from like a web app point of view if you're using mvc or web api uh, somebody actually posted a comment asking me about like what about web forms and i'm like well i didn't reply to them <laughs> yeah. i'm like well you're kind of uh <laughs> yeah i mean you're really that, out of luck there yeah the answer to that is everyone's been saying it's Blazor, which, yeah. okay, if you want that programming model, it's Blazor, but you're still rewriting your app. Yeah, you're so, rewriting your app, yeah. yeah. At least with MVC, you have, like, that 
or even web API, there's that uh, compact shim package yeah. that gives you back like API controller and does some of the model binding the same way. Yeah. Um, there's some helpers there to kind of yeah. alleviate the pain. And, and it's pretty much, I wouldn't say it's the same, but it's similar. Yeah. Like there's, there's no I actually right? I but, think. Yeah. So it's, it's doable. Yeah. So, I mean, you mentioned that app, that, have you done, um, many migrations or have having to move many projects over i've done so we, we had uh half dozen maybe oh wow I think. okay um one was like, a couple was just small you know pretty small apps and they've all been uh katana web api apps okay so it, see that's, never... that's yeah see that's exactly my experience is that it, that's that yeah. was easy because it's like it was the precursor to where we're at now with exactly. startup and everything. So yep. that was like, oh, this is like, let's move some middle custom middleware that I have over. That's, oh, it's not iApp Builder, it's iApplication Builder. Like it's, exactly. it was pretty close. Yep. Yeah. yeah, exactly the same. And you didn't have to work. So I, there were some issues initially with, um, yeah, with Razor, I think, if you were doing things like that. But that was early. And we don't have any, we're not using any Razor in most of our apps. So, yeah. That was all pretty simple. Um, Any dependencies that were yeah. big issues? I'm trying to remember now. There was, there were some. Um, most of them were, but most of them were small libraries. Actually, most of them were just small libraries which we could have replaced. We could have done our own thing, but we just went in pain. So most of the time, yeah. I just went around, went around the open source libraries and put in PRs for it. And that, yeah. that was the quickest way of sorting it. Um, yeah. So yeah, those, to be honest, dependencies were the thing that held up the migration initially. We got it most of the way there and then got stuck. And I can't remember specifically in naming names or anything, but um, yeah, yeah, that, that was the biggest problem. Yeah, the one thing that I have noticed that I, I, didn't, I didn't know until actually having to go through it, which is, and I'm, I'm honestly amazed I don't, again, Twitter's a bubble. You follow certain people and you don't really. So I'm saying this like I don't hear it much, but I don't hear much. I don't know if there's a lot of uh, uproar about it or maybe just people don't run into it. But I'm curious if you guys, ha if you have, which was, so you are targeting, say you were targeting net 4.8, whatever the case may be, some on full framework. And then all of a sudden you start building against net core. And, oh, well, now this package that I was using was multi-targeting. And it was targeting, say, exactly .NET Framework. But little did I know that when I start building against uh, .NET Core, that it starts using, say, the .NET Standard target, or maybe it starts using the .NET Core app target. And guess what? That could be, in and of itself, like, yes, it's the same package, but that, that does not mean at all <laughs> that it's the same API surface, that it functions yeah. the exact same way. And a good example of this, which I told... I had a call with um, people from AWS asking for feedback, and I told them that. I said, little did I know um, yes. that when I started using the AWS SDK, that on that core, all the, it's only async APIs, which is great, yep. but I had thankfully not many, they were kind of like usages that should have been async, but they weren't, so it wasn't the end of the world. But yeah. I said, if you were like, hey, we're, we're moving along here. Okay, the .NET SDKs or the dot, uh, AWS SDK is all good. We'll just be able to move that, no problem. Start building it, and then you find out, oh, no, like that's not the case. And it's one thing yeah. I don't hear about people mentioning that's like. Yeah, I, I ran into exactly that with the idea of exactly that SDK. And it's sort of difficult because on the one hand, I'm like they, they bumped, I think I'm pretty sure they bumped a major version when they added support for net standard, which, so you can't yeah. complain in one sense because you yeah. know, they're following some it's broken, but it does make it that much harder just, just to port stuff. And, and yeah. I, I basically found I'd run into things like that. I'd have to go back and basically fix the original usage of async in the, you know, pre-migration app, push that out and then rebase on top of that. And it adds, it adds hassle, but, I don't know how it, I don't know how common it is to have different APIs. I don't know. I, don't I only know, ran to a couple. I'm, yeah, I guess maybe it's not. That's why I haven't uh, heard much more about it. Because I would think that if it was, I mean, it's a simple as a library author. It's a simple thing to do to just say, like, realistically, 
well, maybe not realistically, but yeah, in actuality, <laughs> you could create a single NuGet package that multi-targets that basically is completely 100% different depending on what you're targeting. Yeah. You just create if defs over everything and you could have something completely different. Yeah. Right? That, yeah, obviously, that's not to say people are going to do that. Um, but then it also brought up the, another issue we experienced, which was um, like platform not uh, supported. Which, uh, yeah. Right? So again, you it it's net standard, but that doesn't, it's net standard, yes. It means it's going to run on .NET Core, yes, but that does not mean it's going to run under Linux when we're running it yeah. under CS and, right? Like, yeah, There's I, all these I, little caveats that you really might not know until runtime. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Have you so, run into the platform stuff? Yeah, yeah, we did. Um, right, right. Initially, there's there's a few different things with that we ran into. Um, the platform not supporting exception. I just, I don't know. I, I I understand why they've done it, but it seems fundamentally wrong to have this is a net standard, i.e., supported everywhere API that isn't supported everywhere. Runtime exceptions are the worst. I mean, they've tried to get around it by using analyzers, which I think is a good idea. Like, it's yeah. analyzers are actually a great way of doing this. And I wonder actually if that ties into the source generators again, because if you've got an analyzer that can hook into this, I don't know if you could do, you could literally fail a build. build? Yeah. Well, you can fail yeah, the build no. with the analyzers, right? But I think that's still specific. Like, you got to control yeah. that now. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we ran into that. Another one we ran into a lot was um culture issues okay which was i think i think it was yeah i think it was mostly culture issues where on windows you have a certain number of cultures available you run it in docker on an alpine container by default it doesn't have any cultures installed and you can get some strange bugs if you yeah you know and trying to figure that out um so yeah that was yeah, it was fun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I haven't ran into that, but I think we are somewhat on the same page as some of the pain of yeah migrating. It just cool. worries me. It's not simple. That's the thing. It is not. Yeah, it is not that. simple, and there's a lot of people who are just not going to be able to do it. I mean, I guess it's great for consultants, but it's uh, there's a lot of pain. There's going to be a lot of legacy ASP net running for many, many years. Which is fine, you know, if they're doing it. But I, I just also see there's going to be lots of teams which just can't find the investment to actually upgrade and are stuck on these old things. Which, you know, yeah, I guess that's the the kind of the naming issue again. I have is like we got this awesome thing in .NET Core, and there's this whether you care about it or not. I guess is a different story. Like whether the community as a whole cares or whether individuals care. I don't really know about like the, the outside perception of .NET, yeah. you know, whether like there's a reality to what that is generally. <laughs> yeah. And I think it, I think what the perception is generally doesn't really equate anymore what it is at all. Yeah. Yet, um, because of the name and especially going back to just .NET, and yeah. not even like not even suffixing it with what people were trying to get promoted out they were saying oh no it's the .NET core it's the cross plat open source stuff now we're just going to back to straight.net and it's like what happened to .NET core oh now it's just .NET 5 it's just .NET now. yeah .NET 5 is .NET core yes but so you're always going to have to explain that that's yeah. the thing I don't you, so why not just call it .NET core yeah I, I, I didn't I don't like know. .NET I <laughs> I'm not sure if they're .NET Core. It's the yeah, yeah. But, but it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, I think the dot. I think the naming that's always going to be a debate that people yeah. will have. But it is what it is. Like it's it's not changing whatever. at this point. I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, you know. Cool. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to do this. Uh, oh no, I appreciate you uh, inviting me. I... If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, and please subscribe for more software architecture related videos.